Uh, hi guys, I uh, have a pleasure today to speak with uh, Paul Hicks, uh, a miniature sculptor, uh, who is uh, quite a busy, quite a busy man at the moment. Uh, three Kickstarters on the go. One is uh, uh, basically fulfilled, which is Baron's War, uh, a med medieval um, miniature game. Uh, then we have Gangs of Rome, which was already founded. I think it started last week, a few days ago. It's already founded within, I think, 40 minutes. Uh, yeah. And launching soon, or when you watch this video, just launched, um, Heroes, Heroes of Arnhem um, uh, project, uh, which seems to be a little bit personal, is it? Um, yeah, it's because it's... It's obviously a period of history I'm interested in, but also um, I'm not sure if many people are aware, aware I and a friend, Simon Bardry, first um, started up a small company in about 2004 called Bolt Action Miniatures. Mm -hmm. And we, we, sold, um, we sold that company to Warlord Games back in 2009. Um, and I... I think by I think it's two thousand and six. I I did a um, a range of British paratroopers then, um, but they were more for D Day, so they were um, in full kit. Um, and it's something I've always wanted to revisit, um, but I never got the chance when I was working with Warlord Games, post selling the range to them, um, and Empress Miniatures, sort of. We came to the conclusion, let's have a go at doing it at Kickstarter and get the range out straight away, you know, in one big hit. So, yeah, it's been a, a passion project, really. Mm -hmm. So how, how is it different to the ones that you actually did uh, before? Well, the the Arnhem Heroes range is um, it's meant to depict the Airborne Forces you know, two, three days into the conflict. So minimal kit, um, looking a bit haggard, um, as opposed to the, I think, which is the standard look of most paratrooper rangers at the moment of uh, hitting the drop zone, all in their um, full webbing and and um, equipment. And also these, these figures could be used for air landing so uh not necessarily paratroopers or glider regiment um so you know they're a bit more um more flexible in what they can be used for mm -hmm. so so um you know it seems like uh story is a very important part of uh, what you are doing well stories and photographs make sculpting so much easier so mm -hmm. if you can see if uh, i find it very hard to um sculpt something if i don't know um if i if i haven't got the figure in my mind it's like anything if you if you enter a job and you don't know what you're doing from the start it's going to take a lot longer than if you've got um the image from the beginning and you can hit it um at, you know running um that, so having a picture um uh, an atmosphere or, or something that you want to portray and you can do that straight away is uh, it, such an inspiration and it, it really speeds up the process and makes it more enjoyable so I can get get that character into the figure because that's you know even a, a lowly infantryman still needs some character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's quite interesting what you said, uh, because, uh, you know, speaking of, for example, Baron's War, the medieval miniatures, you know, when I um, um, get to know, when when I get into Baron's War, I was waiting for the delivery from uh, Food Store uh, Miniatures and Gaming. I bought like a Fireforge kits of um, yeah. uh, Templars, and I painted five of them, and I enjoyed them, and then, then uh, the Food Store stuff came out, and I was like, oh, Wow, you know, you can see suddenly, like you know, each each of the four miniatures that were in that particular pack, each of them is individual with you know with like head scarves and the you know different kind of. Um, the, with it, those know. four figures, I mean, that was just me and Andy, because um, the the whole thing with Baron's War Three, it was really 
we wanted to do a, a small Kickstarter, and I really wanted to do, you know, some characters or some, you know, um, basically things that you can populate your um, your tables with. So it wasn't going to be, we didn't actually think it was going to be that big a range. And then it grew, and then we thought, well, and then we came up with characters, the um, the Smith, and then uh, out of the the peasant pack, uh, the villager pack, I did the little boy riding his hobby horse, and then we went, oh, and then you know his dad could be an old crusader, and then with like the the priest of the um, the village, he used to be a crusader, and then these Templars turn up that used to be, and then it all just snowballed, and everyone had their own little story and it just makes you know where those things make it so much more fun and it's great to be able to fire off um with andy that, like the ideas we've been doing that with the some of the gangs of rome figures that i've been doing for him but oh, i have to say i gangs of rome is i'm just the the sculptor on this one i don't it's it's not actually my kickstarter mm -hmm. so oh let me turn that down yeah, so it's um it's not actually um uh I'm I'm just the commissioned sculptor, but it's mm -hmm. it's still good to be able to be able to put some input and oh this would be quite fun to do. Should we have it, you know, and they could be doing this. Mm -hmm. So there's it's it's all part of the creative process, um, which I really enjoy. Um and then bringing that to life. Well, I hope I bring it to life yeah yeah for sure for sure um you know um we'll come back to baron's war and all other projects but i actually want to um uh, get to know a little bit how you've started you know your beginnings at um uh, at what you are doing right now and uh, right. i was looking through your instagram recently and i wonder you know there's quite a few information that are interesting and i would like to pick up on uh for yeah. example uh you know you, you from young age you seem to be very interested in painting miniatures uh you yeah. post some pic uh, pictures of miniatures you painted uh, when you was um uh, you know a teenager and stuff so uh was it always painting uh, where yeah, yeah, did yeah. that sculpt sculpting uh, became uh, the thing you wanted to uh, you know pursue as a as a career well i'm not i'm i'm not a uh well my parents uh well i think from about two years old my dad built a model railway in the loft like most uh most dads wanted to do um and my mum is um she does she enjoys art so there was always and my sis, uh, my eldest sister is um is very keen on art as well. So we there was always drawing and um making models was always something in the house. Um so from from as even my earliest memory was being told not to go near the uh, the loft hatch in case I fell down while the um the model railway was being put together you know the baseboards were being put down and the, the construction of the the railway was happening um so there's always that and i've always made models i've always been interested um not necessarily in history well yeah very well yes history um but certainly the same as people my my age I had a, a grandfather that served in the Second World War in Italy. Um, so that was always an interest. Um, but making models was the big part of my um, hobby time. And then from there, I found Games Workshop, basically, uh, when I was at school. And I, when I was at school, I wanted to, to go on and make working props for like uh sort of industrial light and magic was a big influ influence um and star wars obviously was a massive part of my life so those those were the things i wanted to be when i grew up um as it happened uh, i made a few wrong choices at college on what course i should be 
doing lost interest and then ended up working in Games Workshop as a part timer and a full time member of staff. Yeah, the, um, that, that, that was in the shop or um yes in a shop so i work yeah a variety of shops in in west london um most of them don't exist anymore so <laughs> i don't know if that was a curse but yeah um, <laughs> yeah i think all of the shops i used to work in don't exist anymore so from there i i learned how to you know sort of convert fig well i i would always chop up tamiya kits to try and make different figures um really interested in sort of napoleonic uniforms and an airfix used to do some multi-pose napoleonic figures at 54 mil so i tried to convert those into different regiments yeah i was never satisfied with the stock figure i wanted to change it in some some way so i think that's how i i got an interest in sculpting mm -hmm. Uh, uh that's that's pretty cool um you you are a traditional sculpture uh, sculptor i would say right you you, you yeah yeah, yeah. Into digital sculpting what is it about what is it that uh what is it about uh, traditional uh, way of sculpting that you don't want to leave why um one i don't i see it as working in an office and i i consider what i do i i I feel like I've retired from life, you know, retired early because this is what I would want to do if, well, when I, when I had a proper day job, this is what I did on my day off. So now I get to do my, you know, I'm retired apart from having to fill out tax forms once or twice a year. So that's, that's how I, I consider myself and I wouldn't want to work on, I like, being able to produce something with my hands. I was always impressed with, you know, models in museums and, and think someone's made that by hand. They've had to measure. And there was a magic about that. There's that, you know, it's so minute, even if they've used the lathe or something to, to machine a piece, they've made it by hand. It's not, it's not had the uh, help, I mean, some of the three D stuff now is is out uh, is astounding what people can do, but it's not how I want to create my my sculpts. And I know that there's a bit of a pushback of, against traditional sculpting methods, and you know people are like come on, granddad, you know, get with the the program. But I I, I don't want to I don't want to do it. I'd like being able to produce and, and challenge myself to be able to produce something by hand and by eye as opposed to using a computer mm -hmm. yeah sure sure there are pro uh, pros and cons for everything i i assume yes. and, uh, you know, oh, absolutely. everybody yeah uh like for example i i get some uh, models printed recently uh, they fell really a small you know they, they 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 are in pieces while the metal sculpt uh you know survives it so from the perspective yeah. of a player that's uh you know and there are positives in there um uh, saying yeah. that i have thought about it for for some items um you know like straight edge pieces that i need to replicate you know um weapons and hard edged things i have thought about it mm -hmm. but definitely for organic um I'd, I'd, yeah, it's it's how I want to be able to carry mm. on sculpting. Um, is speaking about sculpting, uh, actually, um, you know, looking at some of the images of your sculpts that are unpainted, you can see that um, you use certain elements of stuff you've sculpted before yeah. in order to create something else. Is this just simply to speed up a process or? Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so generally genuine generally i will produce what's called a set of dollies so mm -hmm. it will be let's say if somebody wanted um like napoleonic infantry if um if i had to make it each figure individually the the equipment wouldn't look consistent so i generally make five figures five or six figures without arms and heads 
do all the equipment, really enjoy the process of sculpting that equipment and trying to make it as good as I can. Um, and they get cast and then they come back and then I will put um, sculpt new arms and new heads on each figure. Um, and then that gives them the life of their own because all of the the hard work is done and then I can get the enjoyable bit of putting the character into the figure. Now, if um, if I've done some officers and they go off to be cast, generally they all come back in bits and I have like, like bags of just broken figures. So instead of having to, to recreate um, maybe that officer figure where you'd only do one as a one-off, I can cut elements off which sculpt on and then that can be cast up again mm -hmm. yeah that'd be so nice. yeah instead of of um of you know doing the work again um i'll i'll try and find a suitable figure and then use that to as the base figure mm -hmm. Uh, how how do you go about research? You mentioned a little bit about uh, you know photographs, but you know you, you're not going to get photographs uh, from uh, medieval medieval times. Do you go to museums? Um... Yeah, yeah. The, well, it's the gangs of Rome. There's a um, you're in Cardiff, is that right? Cardiff, yeah. Yeah. Well, in St Albans, I only found out recently there is a stunning Roman museum uh, in St in Albans, Carolina. which too far so that's that was full of bits that just blew my mind I thought oh, that will make you know carry that and um some museums are a definite to just see how um clothing falls on a mannequin or how equipment is carried um I do have a complete bugbear with um, museums that show armour, but they only show the front of it and you can't see the behind. It's just, come on, guys, you know, need to see the the reverse. I have a, a very extensive Osprey collection. Um, I, I can't turn a computer around, otherwise you can see the back wall of my studio is just books. Um, yeah, and that's, also, that's quite interesting. That's also what uh, the players, painters use after you produce thing, isn't it? So they have quite a responsible job they they have. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, Os Osprey is fantastic. I mean, I, I I absolutely adore my Osprey collection. Um, yeah, yeah, great books. And also it was quite a prior. Um, I can remember getting my first Osprey book, um, and it was about First World War. British battle insignia and then looking through all the illustrations oh, you know I would love to be able to make that I want to be able to to produce that and I think it was only about 12 at the time mm -hmm. um wow. yes yeah, so yeah so uh, things like that are, are sort of an inspiration but definitely going to see museums mm -hmm. um is is a, a definite thing to do mm -hmm. and for great. research Mm -hmm. um, next question is uh, I wonder what you'll think about this um, you know because to me miniature gaming and especially historical gaming it always triggered the education yeah you know you, you play you, obviously you know you look for reference and stuff but you also want to know a little bit at least about the world so your game is set and what, you, what you'll be doing and stuff yeah. um, as a gamer uh, and the painter of miniatures, I would, I would be the learner in the process. You, as a creator, you you in some way become a teacher, right? Oh, okay, yeah. What what are, what are your thoughts about it? Do you feel any responsibility about it, or is it just pure enjoyment? Um, I feel a responsibility to make make um figures that are honest and are can um have an integrity to show especially like the the second world war stuff or the vietnam war stuff they need to look authentic i think because there is still guys that are alive 
um, the images are there um, and I need, you know, they need to be, I think that's where I, I feel responsible. I need to do something that looks authentic and is correct as much as I can, you know, um, as, as my skill will allow. Obviously, other things like Gangs of Rome has a little bit of um, uh, artistic license. But for the historic ranges I do, I, I want them to be as authentic as possible. I want the equipment to be as as correct as possible um, because I feel that's where my responsibility, I feel, lies. The history, I, I don't feel I have enough time to delve as much into the actual history and be able to teach um, through the miniatures, but at least I think the the figures are as as accurate as possible. Mm -hmm. Does that make I, sense? It does, yeah, it does quite a lot. Um, I think I've seen you met, uh, obviously you mentioned your grandfather, but you also mm -hmm. met um, uh, some veterans and stuff. Do they see your work when you meet with them? Um, about this responsibility to, to, to towards them. Is that uh, part of a meeting or something or I've not I've um I can't remember having a veteran see any of my work I know I'm sure Empress Miniatures in the village where Paul lives there is a marine a US marine veteran mm -hmm. who has given the figures a look over and has approved that they look um authentic um sorry <laughs> go on um yeah um i have met um a raf veteran i've um i've given him a um a model of a plane that he flew and he approved but that's not military, that's not figures. So yeah, I think that's the only case of where they have they have been somebody of the period has has had a good look over them and, and given them the um seal of approval. Yeah, actually I, I was looking at some of the minis of your uh, Vietnam uh, Vietnam range. You have like guys in Louis Levy's jeans and yeah, well, the the Navy SEALs wore um, Levi jeans because they were so much more um, harder wearing in uh, in in the field than um, the actual um, camouflage clothing. But most of that um, comes from the the person that's commissioning the 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 work. So a lot of the actual research will come from the person that actually wants um the figures so because i if they said oh can you go ahead go away and make i want six u.s navy seals and then i come back and then they'll go well that's not i want what i wanted so I, there's normally a, a dialogue with whoever commissions me um and i'll have to say look what would you like you need to tell me Otherwise, we'll just be going backwards and forwards. And then at some point, I have to say, look, I've I've done so much corrections. You know, it's costing me money. Um, so we we definitely have a design brief from the beginning. They've pretty much done the research, and then I'll go ahead and and create what they've the research they've put in. So that's actually the bulk of the research for the figures does generally come from the customer the commission per, the person that commissions but uh, like the arnhem stuff then that's myself going through images that i want to re recreate yeah what i found interesting this is actually fascinating insight um yeah but what i was actually speaking of arnhem uh you know what i really what actually triggered me to sending you message to chat uh, uh with mm -hmm. you today i planned it for a while but this particular your last Instagram post when you have that guy oh, yeah. with a cup of tea and you yeah, know yeah, you yeah. tell the whole story behind it and you yeah. know and you, uh, that's quite uh, fascinating. Do you have more miniatures like this in that series? What can we expect anyway from uh, fr fr from there? Do you have any favorites? Um, 
out of all of them, I think my favourite is the um, is the officer who's uh, laying wounded and firing his his Webley, right. um, and he's got his arm in the sling. I think that one I I really I think that's the figure I'm most proud of. But there's the the uh, major. Digby Tatum Wolfer figure with the umbrella mm -hmm. and um guiding the padre across the road. That that all came from Paul at Empress. He'd read that um anecdote yeah. and thought that would make a great couple of figures. Let's let's do that. And then fantastic. Yeah, again that was uh, a bit of dialogue. Then I, I picked up um the biography of the the officer. And then from there, found a few images that sort of tied with what we wanted, and then worked with that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's fascinating. So um, the Kickstarter is, is coming when, Friday. When does it start? Twenty fourth, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, not long now. So, yes, it's all getting a bit um, squeaky bum time. So I yes. Agree. Have you uh, have you finished that range, or are you still producing anything? Yeah, no, the, it's finished. But with the like the Baron's War figure uh, ranges, we there might be things that I'll just get inspired to sculpt as we as if the the Kickstarter progresses. Um, so you never know; there might be some more coming, but it won't it it won't be you know sixteen new figures. It will be be one or two that I, i'll get inspired to do while we're we're while the campaign is running that depends if it goes well which you know if it, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will do um but you know you can't get to too blase yeah that that actually seems to be the case with gangs of rome there are some uh, miniatures now uh that are still uh in the making and you can see in the pictures uh you know yeah. just like a shapes of shapes yeah, of and stuff Andy's a rotter because he had always, but like especially Baron's War Four, you know. While well, we're done, oh by the way, we need. I think we need loads more. Yeah, thanks, Andy. <laughs> That's brilliant. But there is something else coming out for Baron's War soon. I know you mentioned that you're gonna stop it for for a while, but yeah, was... yeah, yeah. We we need um, we we're, we're looking to sort of take a break from it because. Um, we need it to sort of set, um, settle down. We don't want people just think, oh, you know, I've got another Baron's War Kickstarter, I've got to pay out. You know, we just want things to settle down, people to enjoy it, let the uh, the Uchimere stuff come out. We, got, we have got plans for a couple of um, small campaigns, so the figures that uh, we haven't, I think we, I want to do some armoured Arab infantry, um in mail um so we're gonna it's not gonna be a campaign a kickstarter it will just be released through foot so mm -hmm. no that's great uh right is there is there anything else that you can tell us you're working on obviously don't don't give us any secrets anything um, anything else that is coming from uh, from you in the near future what am i working well, um, Brigade Games in the US, um, we're going to be doing a Plains War range. So that that's going to be really interesting. So that will tick boxes for um, the American Civil War style uniform. It's not going to be the American Civil, uh, Civil War. Um, and um, the Native Americans, I'm quite interested, you know, they... they Having two different styles um, in a range is quite exciting because then you can, once you've you sort of overloaded with one style of figure in tunics, you can then go over and then have a bit more freedom with doing the Native Americans mm. and then vice versa. So I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into that one. Right, seems seems to be the case with Ultraman as well, isn't it? This uh, you know, two different kind kind of forces. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always wanted to do um a Arab Muslim um range, um, and we discussed it, and we we thought um with 
Baron's War 3 having that, that little element of the Crusades, we could then set it in the East um, and then have a crossover with that. But that was definitely uh, something I really wanted to do. And I really enjoyed doing it as well because you get, an, you know, they're a bit better dressed than us Europeans of the period. So there's a bit more, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll finish yeah. soon, but I, I just want to ask uh, about your, is, if you look back at your career, what was your favorite, like, range? What, what's, what's your favorite moment, uh, you know, in terms of sculpting? Oh, wow. Well. Um, okay, well, I think it must be going to see my dad the day I was asked to do my first ever range, I think, full time, and say to him, look, you know, I do this part time, I've done it a little bit here and there. I had a full time job working as a salesman in the wood flooring company. And I said to him, look, and he went, well, why not have, why not try? You know, what have you got to lose? and yeah amazing yeah i think that's probably and i think yeah i that was 20 odd years ago now so that's, yeah i think that's, that's probably my 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 favorite moment you know he's he would he's having that permission to go ahead and and do what i wanted was um yeah was was fantastic yeah this is yeah. this is this 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 is really great and perfect moment to finish <laughs> oh thank you well, it's been... perfect moment to finish i just want to say uh you know one more time uh you know uh about about your um kickstarter coming uh i will be definitely supporting it as i oh, have uh, I, I i have an army of i actually paint them as uh, polish troopers uh, oh, yes. uh so uh you know i'll be looking for uh, looking forward to that i enjoyed that conversation a really good insight you know uh, uh, to storytelling but also techniques and uh, you know how a sculptor works so i appreciate i appreciate your time that was that was no brilliant problem. no no i loved it thank you thank you very much